evil runs rampant when we don't do anything about it. Hello, everybody. How are you doing on this fine? On the day of this recording, it is still Monday, April 17th, but whatever the day it is, whatever the time it is, wherever you are, I'm doing quite well, busy, busy, trying to get this Bam Margera interview series. San Diego, she's lying. It was a ruse to get Lima. Edited and out, but I did want to batch record a few things beforehand so that I can bury myself in working on that whole thing because that is groundbreaking. But to be honest, speaking of groundbreaking, so is this. As you probably know or may know, I do have a couple other channels, BJ Investigates with Jake. I have Study Break with Shelby. And then, of course, I have That Surprise Witness. So maybe a year or more ago, I did a video on Kaya Jones, who is a former member of the Pussycat Dolls. And she was one of the original members of the group. But she left before the group really took off. And back in 2017, she made a series of allegations against the band, against the group, against Hollywood, against crazy people in Hollywood, and specifically against the founder of the Pussycat Dolls, Robin Anton. So Robin Anton has been referred to by Kaya Jones as a den mother, as a sort of Maxwellian type figure for the music industry. Well, pull this up, let me show y'all. 10 days ago, Shelby and I put this video out, the pussycat doll who escaped, Kaya Jones, and it was a video about those allegations. Not only did we make that video, but that video was part of a cross-channel collaboration between Deep Dive, Secret Society, BJ Investigates, where we did cover the lawsuit between Nicole Scherzinger, the current lead singer of the Pussycat Dolls, or I guess she's quit now, and that alleged den mother, the founder of the Pussycat Dolls. Secret Society did another group that Robin Anton had founded. Uh, anyway, it was a cross-channel collaboration. Deep Dive did the full timeline. And we put out a bunch of videos. Like, I think we put out four videos within two days' time of all of these different aspects with different perspectives of the story. Well, wouldn't you know, just three days ago, Kaya Jones went on TV on, I guess, Fox Nation. This is Tucker Carlson. I definitely don't fully support any of these news stations. I think they're all very, very biased and one-sided, but it is an interview with Kaya Jones that came out exactly a week after our video on Kaya Jones came out. I have not watched this interview and I thought, you know what, what better way to watch it than to just kind of live react to the interview with y'all. The video, the total video is 18 minutes and 39 seconds long. I'm very much looking forward to what Kaya has to say. As my usual disclaimer goes, I don't affiliate with one side or another side of the partisan politics in this country. This does happen to have been an interview hosted on a conservative news network or whatever that, you know, conservative is today. If this was on CNN or MSNBC or the Young Turks, I would also be responding and reacting to it. So just getting that out of the way, wherever someone is going to be giving out the information is where I'm going to be going to get it. I'm not about to be stupid and say, oh, she went on Tucker Carlson, so I'm not listening to the interview. That's dumb. And if y'all are doing that, blocking out entire streams of information where you're getting firsthand interviews from people, then I think it's pretty weird that y'all are doing that. And that's weird for you. It's not weird for me that I am going to see where the firsthand information is. It's weird that you wouldn't. So just so we're clear on that. One final thing, this interview is available. I will link it down in the comments below. If you would prefer to just watch the interview without my commentary, then I would encourage you to go and click on that. This is a commentary video. This is a reaction video. So I will be pausing it to react to it. That is what I do here. So now that all of that is out of the way, without further ado, let's get into this interview and see what Kaya has to say. So what did you think of touring? I loved it uh, because it was about the fans. Yeah. Got to spend time with fans. and um, But, you know, there's that aha moment, you know, where wh who am I really talking to? Am I talking to anyone? And, and what am I telling them? What am I uh, displaying that this, because this is, you know, I said that in the interview, it doesn't say caution, this is a lie. There's nothing about how I look, how we're presenting ourselves that says this is a lie, but it's a complete lie. Hmm. Nothing about it is genuine. And, and you're not even allowed to really genuinely say how you feel. So a lot of what Britney Spears has been talking about for so long, I feel, well, finally, someone on a very big platform is actually expressing the mechanicals of how um, controlled you are. You were controlled. 
Yeah, there have been over the years artists to say that. Yeah. And they're almost always called mentally ill. <laughs> yeah. Sh shuffled off into some treatment facility where their brains are destroyed by drugs. Um, yeah. Does that surprise you to see it? So I haven't watched a whole bunch of Tucker Carlson. I don't know if we would necessarily agree on a lot of things, but with what he just said, I have to agree. Whenever people in Hollywood, the music industry start to speak out against being controlled, they are very often called crazy, mentally ill, shuffled off into a treatment facility and put on drugs that do affect how they act and how they perceive the world. That is very, very common. I've seen it happen with Britney, Bam, Amanda, Lindsay Lohan. I mean, anytime they're starting to speak out about like not really wanting people to tell them what to do all the time, they are carted off to these facilities. No. Yeah. No. I have many friends in the industry, some of which are alive, some of which are not anymore. Um, and they all have talked about the same controlling mechanism. I, I just know what saved my life. And I know, you know, that for me is the number one thing is God. You know, God pulled me out of that. And it had it not been for the... So Kaya has made a decision to become a Christian and she often does give the credit to her coming out of this controlling industry to God, which I'm not going to comment on my personal opinions on that, but I will say good for her that she found something that gets her out of it. If that really works for her, fantastic. Lord, I wouldn't be here. Great. How long were you in the group? I was in the group from 20... So 2002 is the audition phase. So, and then I left at the end of 05. So wow. like three years. So three years, she was in there for a while. And Robin Anton, whenever Kaya came out and made her first allegations or whatever, Robin Anton, the group leader was like, oh, Kaya was never a real member of the group. I don't care if she was a real member. She was around y'all for three years. And were you on the road for most of that? Um, no, not all the time. I mean, but when we had shows, we would do sometimes two shows a day. Viper Room was two shows a day, 8 p.m. and 11 p.m. Um, you know, you're, you're a hired cast member. You're paid a weekly stipend. And people didn't even believe what we were paid. And I mean, I still have my paycheck stubs because I thought, you know, they just didn't believe us. They didn't, they didn't believe that we were, we were mistreated. It wasn't, it wasn't what people think it was, you know? How could you be that famous and that badly paid? Right. Yeah. Uh, people do have a hard time believing it. And people are very often like, if you're famous, you must necessarily be rich. They must necessarily be paying you a lot of money. And that is not true. A lot of the people who get into the industry are very naive. They don't have lawyers, especially at the beginning. They don't have money to hire a lawyer. They're just hoping, pinning their hopes and dreams on these Robin Anton types. Uh, because you're owned by uh, an institution. You're, you're not... You're she uses this language a lot, too, about being owned, about not owning herself. And now Nicole Scherzinger, the lead singer of the Pussycat Dolls, has come out and basically used the same terminology. So it's different than when you hear like a band get together and they became a band and then they write songs. Right, right. Totally. Totally different. Um, we were put together and it was cast like a show and it was mechanical chairs. If you ever decided to leave, if you got hurt you were uh, replaced. I mean, even one of the girls who kind of resembled me, they bleached her hair as soon as I left to replace me so that fans wouldn't know. And fans are so on point. They'd be like, why have you made Kimberly into Kaya? Like they would, they would actually say stuff. It's, it's interesting. What were the other girls like? Wonderful, talented, uh, you know, I, I pray for them every day, yeah. Did you think that they were having trouble adjusting to this? Got to be one of the weirdest lives you could absolutely. possibly live, right? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. They all, we, we all have gone through our own, and I can't talk about their abuse. I don't think it's fair to them. Right. Um, I can only speak about my own. But I know that when everything comes out, um, the world will be on their side for sure. Well, abuse. I wonder what that means, when everything comes out. What does that mean? Yeah. Um, because so many fans loved what we were, you know, we were the number one girl group at that time. Um, other than Destiny's Child, there was really, I mean, then Danity Kane came after us. There were a lot of groups that came after us, but at the time we were a very influential girl group. So I think a lot of fans fell in love with the music, with the women, uh, wanting to buy into the hype of what we were. Um, but I think a lot of people would be surprised of what, what we went through. Tell us. Yeah. Um, a, Tell us, girl. Abuse, mistreatment, um, constantly discouraged. You're not enough. You're never enough. 
you're not good enough on any on any accord. Um, you you're just there to do what they want you to do. There's nothing really more than that, you know. It, How can you form personal relations, meaningful personal relationships? You can't. You can't. Can. No, you can't. Um, it's no coincidence that very few of the women have children. Re oh, is that true? Yeah. I so I might have to bleep some of this part out, but maybe y'all can read through the lines. I mean, g Google this stuff. Everybody went and take a look at, you know, the women. And now, Carmeet, you know, she's had a daughter. Jessica's had a child. Um, and I believe Kimberly's now a mom. But majority of the women do not have children. I mean, that's the pressures and, you know, the forcing. <laughs> and, you know, you need, you know, when you're fired if you're, if you're pregnant. You're fired. Can they do that? They can do that. So okay. you felt pressure to get an I was told to get rid of it. No way. Way. <laughs> way. I was told to get rid of it. Yeah. Of the child? Yes. By whom? Um, the powers that be. I'm assuming she means Robin Anton, but she doesn't name a name here. Just flat out said that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How old were you? Uh, 19. 19. Well, that, I mean, that seems like slavery. Well, that's why I, I used words like trafficked or uh, prostitution not because we were actually one but because it felt like that it felt like we were um we were slaves to you know i i believe it's to the evil that runs this planet you know i don't i don't think it's a a group of people per se i think evil runs rampant when we don't do anything about it and as christians we need to do something about it and even if you're not a Christian, I mean, I'm not a Christian. She's not a Christian! And I believe we need to do something about it because it's absolutely unacceptable that this is way more normal than not. That people in Hollywood, especially these young, vulnerable, impressionable girls are being traded, are being treated like they are disposable, like they can be easily switched out for someone else. Like they can't make their own reproductive choices. I will never stand for that. And I don't think any of us should. No matter if you have chosen to practice a religion or you have not, it is the right thing to do to call out the bullshit where you see it. In particular, women not being able to make their own choices about reproduction. So it's just interesting to hear you say that you were effectively forced to have an mm -hmm. since the discussion of abortion is couched in terms of choice as a liberation. Yeah. And that was my first thought is that if you're going to be pro-choice, that means you have to allow people to make the choice to also have the kid if they want, to also bring the pregnancy to term if they would like. Movement, this is a decision you make to liberate yourself. You make it freely. Mm -hmm. It's your body, your choice, but it doesn't sound like you felt... Not me agreeing with Tucker Carlson again. Felt like it was your body, your choice. No, and you know, I had had an 16 being a young girl in the music industry, I was signed to Capitol before the Pussycat Dolls, but that was my choice. I really didn't know any better and no one was really there to, I didn't tell my mom, I didn't tell anyone. I just yes. made a choice that was a poor choice. Then now being in the height of this position and my job and really not wanting to lose my job, I was told, oh, yeah, you get rid of it. And so I went and <laughs> during, in between a uh, rehearsal and I actually was hemorrhaging and very ill at the time that I was still performing. And so that's when, you know, that moment of these two young girls in the front row of our show were performing at Divas Live. It's at MGM Grand in Las Vegas. 23 million people are watching on VH1. It's like, you know, it's your dream. This here it is. And I'm in real time still losing my child and being told how fat I am. And, and, and like, these are things you're told. This is horrible. I'm probably going to have to cut out a lot of this because I don't want this video to be, you know, what it, but I will link it below. If y'all want to go hear the full gravity, the full nitty gritty details of all of it, I will link it below. Because you're not good enough. Again, it's to control you. So you're told like, why does your butt look, it has like pizza sewn on it. You're so, you're so fat. You're told these things. So you said that out loud. Pizza sewn on it. What's this pizza push? Oh yeah. Though. No, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. This stuff is sad. I know it's hard to believe because people are like, real. that's horrible. It's like, it, it was horrible. It was horrible. I get midnight phone calls about what I ate. You know, you're not allowed to eat cheese. You're not allowed to eat certain things. I kept a journal about it because che I- Let me just correct you and say that <laughs> cheese is life affirming. I think so. I, yeah, I, I love cheese. Science, amen. 
just had some for a while. I love cheese. But yeah, it was it was difficult. It was um it was controlled and that's the only way I can explain it. It's not something I ever encountered again. I encountered it then. Um, I think a lot had to do with the powers that were running that group. I don't think it has to do with everyone in indefinite in the industry, but there is a, a thread in the industry that certain artists go through this, unfortunately. So you're standing on stage, you're still hemorrhaging from yeah. your Yes. How did you feel about that at the time? Horrible. Horrible. Oh, you did? Oh, you did? Oh, yeah, no, horrible. Um, you know, because it's taking place in your body. The body's your temple. And you could feel that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, any woman that's like screaming their making it seem like it's it's such a heroic thing. You know, something else is going on because that's that's not how you feel. You feel like something has been taken from you like a kidney. Like something that has always been inside of you has been taken. Like that's how it feels. It feels um, horrible. It's and I don't know if that's true for every person. I don't think it's appropriate for her to be speaking for every woman who's gone through this. But what I can definitely say is she's certainly allowed to speak for herself. And if that is how she feels, then that is how she feels. If she is, I mean, it makes sense that that's how she feels because she said it wasn't even something she even wanted to do. She was forced to do it. So it makes sense that she feels like something was taken because something was taken. Something was taken from her that she shouldn't have had to give up based on her choice. It's a horrible experience and it's a traumatic experience. Um, and they're like these two little girls in the front row and they're going, oh, mommy, she's a pussycat doll. And I was coming through the audience. So I'm like staged, Patti LaBelle singing. I'm about to go on stage with all of my, you know, band members. And these little girls just kind of gave me a, a shock to my core, you know, out of the mouth of babes, literally. Yes. This is like uh, a hallucinogenic scene you're describing. Oh my gosh, it was you're still <laughs> hemorrhaging from your. Yes. Patty Labelle is singing. Yes, it's tens of millions of people are watching. Yes. And two little girls say and this. And two little girls say this. Inside you. And literally, it was like I can't do this. Like they think that this is beautiful. Like they want to be me the way I wanted to be a, a Spice Girl. Absolutely not. I cannot do this. Like I have to figure a way out. That was the beginning of, I gotta figure a way out. That's wild that yeah. they came to you on stage while performing. Mm -hmm. well, it was at the side of the stage because I was about to go up. Yeah. I wonder where those two little girls are now. Truly, because they saved my life. Truly, yeah. Was that really the first time that you'd had some connection to, to these transcendent forces or something's acting on you, to, clearly? Um, like, were you a... I don't understand about the transcendent forces acting upon her. I really, I don't, I'm not going to co-sign that. A believer in anything before oh, then? Oh, yeah. I, yeah, absolutely. I always listen to the, the Lord is who told me I needed to leave the Pussycat Dolls. I mean, Scarlett Johansson was a good nudge. She came and did a, a guest appearance with the Pussycat Dolls and she was getting her hair and makeup done with me. And she said, I would never let them talk to me the way they talk to you. Like in the film industry, we don't tolerate that. So Good. she was, she caught it right away, the abuse. And, um, and I Good for her. Thanks uh, for speaking up about something, Scarlett Johansson. I remember thinking, hmm. And then those two girls saying what they said, and I'm in the process of losing my <laughs> um, That was the aha moment for sure. Um, but the Holy Spirit in prayer, I remember being in my home, and he said, you're going to end up not, not alive if you stay here because of just who he made me to be. I'm just not built for, um, I think you have to really have something, a chink in your armor in the sinister realm to tolerate what, uh, what you go through in certain sectors of the music industry for sure. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah. So you got the message you have to leave this job, which and getting that job, of course, was your goal, yeah. right? Out of yeah. thousands. That was of, my dream, yeah. Of course, but you have to leave it. Yeah. How long did it take you to leave it? Um, I'm going to say s almost a year. I mean, it was it, from that moment the clock began. I knew I needed out. I didn't know how that was going to work. I wanted to be respectful because the people that owned us were universal. I mean, you're not going to go up against Universal Music Group and win. So, you know, you have to find the wherewithal to be very strategically wise.
yes. uh, prophetic instruction <laughs> and be smart about it. So you and, were under contract to that? Uh, yes, yes, I was under contract. And you cannot fool with contracts in the mm -hmm. entertainment business? No. Yeah, it's under the universe, literally. And so um, I was adamant about being wise to completing my contract, doing the best that I could, and completing the album, which I did complete, finished, signed off all rights on it, um, and that was it. What was that like that year? Hard, hard and sad. Um, didn't get to say goodbye to my bandmates. Um, said goodbye to the executives. They knew the decision. They asked me if I wanted to be a solo artist still under the institution, but I knew that that could have been the worst thing for me because I still was really not sure who I was as an artist at that point. I was so broken um, and I was scared that it could lead to me just being shelved. So the wisest thing was to step away, not go into another contract with anyone and take a beat. Yeah. Well, that's so there's this terminology that I've heard in the entertainment industry, in particular the music industry, but I think it happens throughout, of being shelved. And essentially it is the sinister tactic of essentially signing an artist to a label for the purpose of never letting them put their music out and never letting them go on tour. It's for the purpose of keeping them under control. So you'll get them to sign a contract and it's like an exclusive contract. You can't do music, you can't do concerts outside of our agency or our label. And we're gonna be the ones in charge of getting you these contracts. We're gonna be the ones in charge of getting you the deals and the, and the music performance slots, et cetera, et cetera. But then the managers and the agents and stuff, they never ever do that. And so you're just sitting there and unable to do your art. It's called being shelved. That's hard. Yeah. Because you're on a trajectory shaped like that. Yes. And then you voluntarily just step off. Oh, yeah. A $13 million record deal. You're walking away from, you know, you're not, you, you know, you are ascending. And your ascension is with the best writers, the best producers. There is no, like, there's no plan B or C. You're going into A, you're a top mainline production. The main people in the music industry are sitting with you for breakfast. So you're aware of just how important you are. You're having breakfast with some insanely powerful people who are talking about writing hits for you. And you're going into the studio with the best people possible. Like, I mean, you're, you know, you're just, wow, this is so cool. Is it though? You know, is it? And for what price? What price are you paying for this? You know? Yeah. What are you giving up? What are you taking on? It's just a very heavy decision. I and mean, we should just say for viewers <laughs> who don't follow this, so the music business in the United States is the global music business. Yes. It's like that's for the whole world. Yes, that's right. There's, there's no kind of competing no. right, center no. of world music. No. And, I, and part of the contract was I was, uh, as long as my voice was being heard, I was not going to be able to be heard because I had an immediate offer from Capitol Records. And at that point, um, I remember Julian Raymond and Andy Slater, still friends of mine, They've known me since I was a 16 year old girl when I was signed to them under a development deal. And I remember Andy and Julian calling me and saying, you're gonna hear it from us. Um, we can't sign you. And I literally was just like, am I blacklisted? <laughs> like, you know, that's what immediately what I thought. And they said, uh, no, you're not blacklisted, but you're gonna have to wait. And, um, and it sucks. Yes, the answer is yes, you are blacklisted. Kaya, you're just gonna have to wait until they do a second album, but. A pray that they do a second album. So I had to wait. And that was three years of waiting. What did you do? Uh, I sang background vocals for Mick Jagger. For well, what was that like? <laughs> awesome. I sang background vocals for Mick Jagger uh, with Catherine, you know, Katy Perry, uh, who was signed to Sony at the time. You know, she wasn't Katy Perry yet. She hadn't kissed she the girl by, already that. She Nothing. went by Catherine. She went by Catherine. Uh, she was a Christian artist. Um, you know, her parents know the Lord. She knows the Lord. Yeah. What was Mick Jagger like? Uh, very talented. Very talented. Very controlling. Very talented. Uh, very aware of his instrument and um, top tier of the industry. So, yeah. Well, yeah, he's Mick Jagger. Yeah. 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 Um, very impressive. Definitely. Um, so that, for me, was... The, between that and then um, and then I got a modeling deal. I was lucky enough that I got a modeling deal and I went to New York and I modeled for a little bit, but I was like, this isn't for me, this is boring. 
Yeah. Yeah. It was. I just love writing music and singing. That's that's my passion. That's my love. So, what was happening inside you during those three years? Oh gosh, tremendous sadness, depression, depression for sure. Yeah, because I wasn't getting to cr create. And I remember when. I was then allowed to create again because it was like a moment again that happened. Oh, yeah. And it was like, yo, oh, yes, a moment like, OK, now it's time. And it was like 1 a.m. in the morning. And I get a phone call from a very big executive who was at a Christmas party. And um, basically, the powers that be said, we're going to turn this solo record into a, a second album. So, so I'm wondering if this is the same powers that be that told her that she had to have that procedure this is different powers that be they were pushing for someone's solo record and at that point they were like no we're just going to turn it into the second pussycat doll album and i knew it and literally the call comes in it's like 105 in the morning and i'm like why are you calling me and I'm like it's time to record it's time to record you're going to be free you start now like and i mean it, it's like that it literally is like that it is a tiny group of people that control the music world yeah wow Huh. Yeah. And I'm a little confused what she means. Like, um, the Pussycat Dolls are doing their second album, so you're going to be free. It was like, I guess she had to wait until they did their second album for her to be. F I don't get it. I really don't understand the full inner workings of what she just explained. So when they say to do something, you do it. Well, I knew at that point, like they had internal information <laughs> that I was then, you know, free. I could now start recording and my voice wasn't on it. I wasn't a part of any of the you know, the copyright or anything like that. I was my, my voice wasn't a signature on it. So um, that gave me freedom to start recording and creating who I was. So I started immediately doing that in hopes that, you know, I was going to make some headway. But yeah, it is. It's very strategic. When I, I'll tell you how strategic it is. When I said that I pray to Jesus on camera, I was called that day by people in the music industry and said, I hope you know you can't walk that back. Can't walk that back? What do you mean? What I said about Jesus. What, why would you walk it back? Correct. I don't get that. Well, if you're a Satanist, you would walk it back. Oh, so, like that's the theory is that it's Satan versus Jesus, I guess. And look, listen, I don't want to minimize, you know, I know that that is what a lot of people really do truly believe. I will say I, I don't have any insight into that. I really, I don't. I was raised in an evangelical environment. And in my personal experience, religion was used as a tool to control, to control thought, to control actions, to scare, to instill fear. It wasn't used in a way that I have a good view of it. I understand that's not everyone's experience. Obviously, if it was, a lot of people wouldn't be calling themselves Christians. But this whole part about, you know, Satanists and Christians and all that, I, I don't know. I can't speak to that. And I really, I don't even want to speculate. So that it was that offensive. Oh, absolutely. Yes, yes. Absolutely. And so if you're a Satanist, do you think that some of the people involved were Satanists? Oh, of wholeheartedly, yes. Yes. That's a that's a little surprise. I mean, for those of us who haven't been in the music business. I don't I think mean, it's that surprising. It's not surprising at all. Let me let me let me apologize. Apologize for my falseness. <laughs> I don't think it's that surprising. I'm so shocked to hear that guy. I really just say this. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's it's really not I that can't shocking. I said that. I it's pride not. myself I mean, on like, my let's just honesty. be honest. I think well, I think, you know, let's just call a spade a spade. I think Amen, baby. I'm with you hundred percent. I feel like we're like as especially as believers, we're like, okay, we cannot be agents for Satan. We can't speak about things, but we're supposed to, because the thing is is that they've already picked a side. And they're very bold about their side. Um, okay. So again, I'm really honestly not sure about the whole Satanists versus Jesus Christians. I really don't know. I don't. I don't have any idea about it. I don't have any idea. So with that being said, what I do have a little bit of an idea on is Kaya made these allegations against the Pussycat Dolls and against Robin Anton in 2017. And because of her political affiliations and probably in part because of her religious affiliations, she wasn't really taken seriously. People didn't really take her seriously because she really wasn't in the club. It also didn't help her that the Pussycat Dolls at the time were saying that they didn't experience what she was claiming she experienced. They didn't go through what she said she went through. That's what they said at the time. That did not help her case. 
Now we're five, six years later and she's still saying the same thing and she hasn't changed her story, but the other members have kind of changed their story. They have kind of come out and not all of them, but some of them have now come out. One of them's in an active lawsuit against the owner, the founder, Robin Anton. And so I hesitated a little bit to really show this whole like Tucker Carlson, Fox Nation news clip. But at the same time, if that's where the news is going to be coming from, that's where it's coming from. If she goes on another channel, if she goes on another network and she does more interviews, I would cover them as well. No matter what the political leaning or tilt of the station that she went on was, because I want to hear it from her. I want to hear it from her. She hasn't changed her story. It seems like she has the same exact story. She did kind of, she did kind of waffle back with the whole, was it a bleep tuition ring? Was it just kind of like one? I don't really think it's worth getting into the distinction of if it was or if it wasn't. I mean, if it felt like one, it probably was one. That's just my opinion. That's just speculation. That's just theory. I was not there and I do not know. Um, that being said, I am sorry to hear what Kaya says that she went through. I'm sorry that no one believed her or not a lot of people believed her. Not enough. Not a critical mass believed her when she did first try to come out. I'm sorry that she had to go through all of those things alone, it seems, without a lot of support. But I'm also glad and hopeful that the tides are turning and people are starting to say, you know what, let's really look at this for what it really is. And the most common sense answer here is that she probably did suffer through some of this abuse. And I believe that she did. I believe her. That's just my opinion. That's just my belief. Beliefs aren't defamation. That's all I really had for this video for today. In the meantime, facts ain't defamation. Love you, mean it. Okay, bye.